Here's how resource loading works in GDevelop. The way resource loading works now in GDevelop has changed. When a game starts, resources are now loaded into the game scene by scene, following the order that the scenes are placed in in the scene list. So in this example, it starts with the opening scene, the first scene, and then the second scene. And to show how this works, I've set up these three different scenes, the first one having very few resources in it, but the next two scenes have a lot of resources that need to be loaded in. When you preview the game from the engine, you won't really see the loading happening because the resources are already on your computer. So to really see this in action, you need to export your game to another browser. We can generate a link to gd.games to run a quick test. When the game first loads in, it's going to go pretty quickly because the first scene had no extra resources. But when I go to the second scene, you'll see the loading bar starts up again. So the engine will now load the resources from the first scene during the initial loading, and then in the background we'll run the rest of the scenes. So while we're here in the first scene, in the background, scene 2 is loading in. So if we wait long enough, and then click to change the scene 2, there won't be a loading screen between the two scenes. The reason this new method of resource loading is important is because it means your players can jump right into your game, rather than having to load the entire game up front. And once all of your scenes are loaded in, you can flip between your scenes without any loading screens. So, while this is really great for getting your players into your game really quickly, this does mean that if scenes aren't loaded in, there's a potential for the engine to show you that loading screen between your scenes. But, we can create our own custom loading screen if we want something else instead. So in Engine, what we're going to do is create a transition scene. We'll add a new scene and call it Transition, and then open that scene. We'll change the background to black, because usually you fade to black between scenes. And we'll grab an icon to use as the loading indicator. We'll use this saw, because the saw is playing an animation which will show players that the game is still running and hasn't frozen. Now we'll go to the event sheet, and set up some events where at the beginning of scene, we will preload a scene. And for now we'll start with the first scene. And then we'll check to see if a scene has been loaded in with another event. And then if that scene has been loaded into the background, we'll change scene to the first scene. Which means now we need to go to the opening scene, and instead of changing it to first scene here, we'll change it to the transition scene. So now when we click the first scene, we'll change to the transition scene, and the transition scene will preload the first scene in the background, and when that scene is loaded, we'll change the scene to first scene. And before we export the game to test it, we'll move the transition scene up to the top. So when the game loads in, it will load opening scene first, and then the transition scene, and then these heavier, more demanding scenes. And now we'll generate a link. So the opening scene loads in, and then when I click on scene 1, we'll go to that transition scene, which will serve as our custom loading screen between these two scenes. And you could do whatever you want here, you could have animations or videos or progress bars or whatever you want to do with this scene, you can add it in. But between scene 1 and scene 2, there will still be this progress bar. So let's change that. We'll use this transition scene for everything in the game. So to do that, we need to first make a global variable, and we'll call it Scene Transition, and then press Apply. So then in the opening scene, right here where the transition scene is picked, we'll change a text global variable, the Scene Transition, and set it to the exact name of the scene we're going to, which is First Scene. And make sure to put it in quotations so it registers as text. So now, when we go to change the scene, we'll also change the global variable to the name of that scene. And then in the transition scene, we'll need to go into the action, change to use an expression, we can type in the first few letters to get the autocomplete to kick in. And there we go. So now it'll preload scene transition the variable. And then we can do the same thing for the condition and action. Change it to an expression, select scene transition, change to an expression, 
scene transition. So whatever this variable is set to, before coming into the scene, it will then go to once it's loaded in. So we'll do the same thing for this as well. Then I just need to do the same thing to both of the other scenes. So for the last time, we'll start at the opening scene, and then when I click scene 1, we'll go to the transition scene until it's finished loading the scene that we're trying to go to. And from that scene, if I click to go to the next scene, we do the same thing. We go to the transition scene in between before going to the second scene. A few things to keep in mind with resource loading is that resources now load per scene, but if you have any global objects, the assets in those objects will be loaded at the beginning of the game as well. Now if you'd like to continue learning more about GDevelop, then be sure to check out this playlist.